Today is not my review of the new DJI 03 digital FPV system because DJI have excluded me from this release. They have failed to respond to any emails that I have sent them with regards to this system about being involved or even questions and in fact they've been so unhappy with some of the content I've released recently they've even contacted third party vendors that I work with. However, just because DJI didn't send me one doesn't mean that I haven't got one. I have a product with O3 built in, but I can't talk about it quite yet because it's still under embargo until the end of the month. However, what I can do is share with you some of the basic facts and things you need to know about the new O3 system, what it is and isn't compatible with, and some important details you need to know before jumping in on this one. Now, I will be doing my full review on this at the end of the month and if you're interested in seeing that please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I also want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons before I go into this video. The last two weeks has shown me more than ever just how important it is at times to be independent of a manufacturer where I will not let them influence me in the content that I make just because they want me to change something that they don't like. Today's video, like all of my content, would not have been possible without the support of my patrons and I just want to say a huge, huge thank you from me. Now, I have my trusty 3D printed O3E unit in front of me, so let's get on with it and let's talk about what this new system from DJI is all about. So, we now have a new digital FPV system from DJI called O3. This is, for all intents and purposes, their second generation FPV system based on their OcuSync technology. The first system, which was the DJI Digital FPV system, came out with the original FPV Goggles version 1 and then later had the FPV Goggles version 2 that released alongside the DJI FPV drone. Whilst we had a Goggles version 1 and version 2, we still had the original FPV system. O3 is the next generation on top of that, so we now have the O3 ear unit and camera which is compatible with the new DJI Goggles 2 as well as the original DJI Goggles version 2. It is worth noting though that the new O3 ear unit is not compatible with the DJI FPV Goggles version 1. The reason for that is the FPV Goggles version 1 are only compatible with 5.8 GHz system. The new O3 system is single band from a video point of view, but it is dual band from a telecommunication point of view between the goggles, the remote and the ear unit, and as such it requires goggles that are dual band, which is the DJI Goggles version 2, as well as the DJI Goggles 2. The new system carries over a number of the features from the past, but it is more like the DJI Avata than it is the original DJI FPV system. It still has the built-in remote control link capability, however, rather than it being compatible with that original large black controller, the O3 ear unit is now compatible with this, the smaller game style controller that is compatible with the DJI FPV drone and the DJI Avata. The original black remote will not work with this O3 ear unit unfortunately. As I mentioned, the O3 ear unit is compatible with both the DJI FPV Goggles version 2 as well as the new Goggles 2, but there is a difference in the live view performance depending on which one you choose. For instance, if you use the O3 with the original FPV Goggles version 2, the live feed resolution is 810p. 120 frames a second low latency mode will give you about 28 milliseconds of latency, and 60 frames a second latency mode will give you about 40 milliseconds. However, However, when you use the new O3 ear unit with the new Goggles 2, you get 1080p live view resolution, you get 100 frames a second rather than 120, which means in low latency mode the latency increases slightly to about 30 milliseconds rather than 28 like on the V2s. In normal 60 frames a second mode though, things are pretty much the same, DJI stating the latency is about 40 milliseconds. The reality is, on one set of goggles you're getting higher resolution but slightly more latency and on the other set of goggles you're getting lower latency but lower resolution as well. 
This also has an effect on the recording capability of the goggles too. For instance, these can only record at 100 and these can only record up to 120, meaning that depending on what you're doing with your footage, the output will change depending on which goggles you're using. The changes you have depending on the goggle in live feed is also reflected in the DVR on the ear unit as well. The O3 system has a built-in DVR which has 20 gigabytes of onboard storage, but you can attach an SD card to it as well, giving you the capability of recording onboard and on the SD, just like we've seen on the Avata. Just like the Avata, it can record 4K, 50 or 60, 2.7K up to 120 frames a second, depending on what goggles you use it with, and 1080p up to 120 frames a second as well. Just jumping in from the future, DJI actually made an addition just before launch and added in both 100 stroke 120 frames modes in 4K. In the video, I originally state that you only get 100 frames or 120 frames a second, depending on which goggle you use, in 1080p or 2.7K, but that is now available in 1080p, 2.7K and 4K. The big changes in recording options between the goggles is that if you're using the O3 ear unit with the V2s, you can record up to 120 frames a second in 1080p and 2.7K. However, if you're using the O3 with the goggles too, you're limited to recording in 100 frames a second in 1080p and 2.7K. There is also a bit of a quirk in the O3 system on how you choose what latency mode you're in as well. For instance, the original FPV system system allowed you to select the latency mode. However, currently in the testing that I've seen, this system does not. You only get low latency mode in either 1080p 100 or 120 frames a second or 2.7k in 100 or 120 frames a second. Me from the future again and just stressing also the new 4k 100 or 120 frames a second mode as well depending on what goggle you use. All of the recording resolutions on the onboard DVR, such as 4K 50 or 60, or any of the 50 or 60 frames per second recording modes are limited to normal high latency mode. That means if you want to get that more cinematic footage with normal frame rates, you're going to be limited to using this system with the normal latency mode. Just like the DJI Avata drone, the new O3 ear unit records gyro data and has built-in image stabilization. If you want to use it with gyro flow, you can record the gyro data when using it in wide camera mode, or if you want to use DJI's Rocksteady, you can simply turn that on and get all of the same capabilities that we've seen on the DJI Avata drone. This system has a built-in gyro sensor in the camera, and as a result of that, you are going to need to do some things to get the best possible performance from it. DJI, do warn that you need to be careful of vibrations on the frame, especially at specific motor speeds, and 24 kilohertz is going to be a very real problem on this system, and you're going to need to try soft mounting your cameras to get the very best performance from this system moving forward. Now the reason this 24 kilohertz is a potential problem is the IMU frequency of the O3 camera is between 24 and 30 kilohertz, and it just happens to be the case that the default PWM frequency of most ESCs is also 24 kilohertz as well, and as a result it allows for the potential of resonance causing a problem in the IMU in the camera and affecting the performance of the gyro stabilization. Chris Rosser has a great video covering PWM frequency on ESCs, and I'm sure he's also going to have a lot to say on this specific subject in his review as well. Whilst on the camera, we should go over the specs on that, and it is pretty much the same as what we've got on the Avata. It is a 20 by 20 by 20 camera that has a 1.1 over 7 inch sensor with a 48 megapixel equivalent resolution. It has built in gyro data, and it also supports additional color profiles like D Cine like. This camera is fitted to the DJI ear unit, but it can be removed from the ear unit just like we have seen in the past, so it does leave the door open to maybe seeing cameras from other third parties in the future. One of the big improvements on the O3 system that we've all been screaming for in the DJI system, and the irony is we got it through hacking, was MSP DisplayPort, aka Canvas Mode. O3 supports with Betaflight full Canvas Mode OSD. It no longer has that limited OSD.
However, it isn't clear today how it's going to work with the likes of iNav or Ardrapilot and it's likely that those systems may need a few changes to be compatible with what DJI have done. However, we do in beta flight at least have a fully featured OSD on this system now. Another fantastic thing about the OSD is the fact that you can now record it on the goggles. You have the option on the ground side DVR to record the camera view so you get everything including the DJI OSD and the MSP DisplayPort OSD but you can turn that off if you want a clean view as well but it now means that you have a proper recorded backup in the goggles of what you were seeing on the aircraft. You may have noticed whilst I was talking about recording that OSD on the goggles I was pointing at these the goggles too. The reason for that is it's sadly a goggles 2 feature only. The V2s whilst will record it does exactly the same as it did before with the old system it records a video image only. You can record the subtitles file but the V2s with the O3 system still cannot record the OSD data on the DVR that is a goggles 2 feature only. Now the reason for this is likely due to the additional onboard process processor that the goggles 2 has that the goggles v2 doesn't that is the e3t chip and i'll be talking about that a bit more in further videos now size wise this new ear unit is roughly 32 by 30 by just 14 mil tall and the camera is 20 by 20 by 20. Whilst it is incredible just how small DJI have been able to pack this new ear unit into there is going to be some trade-offs for that and that is heat. This system uses 40% more power than the previous DJI FPV system and as a result of that you're going to need to make some very careful decisions on how this system is cooled. You are not going to be able to bury this in a frame or decase it and have it survive. You are going to need to make sure that it is getting plenty of airflow. You're also going to see manufacturers start to release things like heat sinks for this because the thermal management of this is going to be a problem especially in hot climates. Now just looking around my 3D printed ear unit because I can't show you a real one and talking about mounting you will see that there are four holes on the top here and there will be four screws in the original one and you have four holes here. They are actually 25.5 by 25.5 and they actually have M1.6 screws in them as standard. Technically you can use these for mounting the ear unit into your frame but you are going to need to get yourself longer screws because the ones supplied are certainly not going to be long enough to go through carbon fiber. Those screws are what actually hold the two halves of the ear unit together because the two halves actually separate apart. Now just walking you around this ear unit what you have over here is a removable plate where your camera cable comes out very similar to the previous ear unit. You have a USB-C port for our connection to our data such as firmware updates. You can see the two holes there for the antenna ports. Antennas are removable. UFL connections inside as before. On this side we have the SD card slot below the USB-C port. Your bind button is on the other side here and then you have your areas where you can mount it either this side here there's a large flat area or this side here. You also have some curved edges here so if you wanted to put a strap over the top you could as I've said however predominantly most people are either going to be using sticky pads to hold this down or trying to mount it via those screws. One thing to note on this ear unit is its connection which plugs in over here is not the same connector as it was on the original DJI ear unit. There is no direct soldering on this however it is a different connector and it is more like the connector that's been used on the Avata ear unit from Walksnail. Now there is so much more that I will cover on this in my review at the end of the month but there are some gotchas on this system that I want to talk about before I finish this video up. There is no question this new O3 system is a step forward. It is basically a DIY Avata. If you want to know what the image quality is like go look at the Avata, it is the same, I cannot see any differences. It also though has some of the limitations of the Avata as well, it uses the same software as the Avata, it has that similar OSD for the base OSD but you do have 
canvas mode now as well. Those limitations though could be a deal breaker for some people. For instance, yes, it has low latency mode, but there isn't an option to select it. It is limited to what frame rate it is recording in. So you can only have those low latency mode in either 100 frames a second on the Goggles 2 or 120 frames a second on the Goggles V2. You cannot change the power output on this system at the point of me making this video. There are no power mode settings and there are differences in the channel frequency allocation on O3 than there was on the previous FPV system and it doesn't quite align up the same and I will be sharing a chart on that in the very near future as well and covering that in a separate video when I talk about the RF side of this system. This is clearly a step forward but it isn't perfect. You have to take into account the thermal management. You have to take into account the vibration isolation for the camera. And if you're someone that's going to want to record in 4K60, but wants low latency, then this isn't going to do it for you. What this has is all of the compromises we expected to see. And that was what happens when you try to cram an action camera and ear unit all in one. It does not act like two separate devices. And as a result of that, it is compromised in some areas. And those compromises are going to be a problem for some people. I do though think this is a big step forward for the standard FPV side of things. If you want an FPV system that is going to offer very good recording, then it is going to be worth a look. But this is not going to replace your GoPro overnight. And the reality is if you're someone that wants decent cinematic footage and specific frame rates, this isn't going to cut the mustard for you. Now, you might be wondering why has he forgot about the most important question, and that is RF hacks, FCC mode, and things like 1200 milliwatts. Well, let me get a few things clear first of all. There is no NACO file for this new DJI O3 system as of today. The current NACO files, NACO, whether it be the FCC hack or the 1200 milliwatts hack, do not work on this system. However, there is something potentially that does. I'm doing more testing as we speak, as I'm making this video, and I will be putting out a separate video at the same time as this video goes live, discussing that specifically. And if you're interested in checking that out, there will be a link to that in the description of this video as well. Now, as I've mentioned, I will be covering more on this in the near future, so please do make sure you are subscribed. A final message, whilst you will have seen loads of reviews out there today, there is a couple of reviews I'd like to recommend you go and see. The first is Mr. Chris Rosser's, and the second is Mr. Andy RC's, and the third is Mr. Ken Dobo's. They are channels that have not only supported this channel and me, they are people I also class as friends in the FPV world as well. So please do go and check out their videos. I will be putting a link to them in the comment section of this one as well. They will be giving you a lot more detail on this on day one because they are able to and they are not under the restrictions that I am at this moment in time. As I've said, I will be sharing some thoughts on an O3 based product in the very near future towards the end of the month. And I think you're going to want to see that. So please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel if you want to see that. Finally, if you would like to support us to keep us independent and not have to worry about the problems that I have experienced in the last two weeks, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep this channel running. And if you think you'd like to support us to keep making the independent and content that we do, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. There will be more coming in the near future. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.